All right, you guys, as you guys can see by the thumbnail, I got to go ahead and get it in. Groundbreaking, exclusive information straight off the press. No, on the real, I just want to spend a few minutes with you guys real quick. I'm getting off to a late start. I was about to go get my workout in when somebody reached out and told me about this case that's unfolding right now in Southern California, San Gabriel Valley out there in that area. So, you know, one thing that I've noticed over the last 10 to 15 years is they're starting to do a lot more indictments out in Southern California now, whereas back in the 90s, it was all about Northern California. They were going after the NF, the NR, street regiments. They were going after gang activity in Northern California. It seems like they're giving a lot more focus now to what's going on out there in Southern California. So, you know, one of the videos that came on that I watched with respects to this case right here, it brought back memory straight up. I don't know if you guys have seen any news coverage on this particular case right here, Operation Silent Cadence, but there's one clip that I've seen that shows the feds when they're, they're doing a, a raid on one of the locations and they have a box that's in the street. That's the same kind of box that they put out in front of my house when they raided my house, feature court in San Jose when I got caught up. But if you guys think back to some of the, the stories that I told you guys about how I got caught up and you remember that I mentioned the fact that they put a box in my driveway and the box kept repeating over and over, occupants of 3830 Beecher Court, this is a search warrant, open the door. And it just kept repeating that over and over. That's the same kind of thing right there that they showed in one of the videos. Anyways, it's gonna be interesting to see how this case plays out. Obviously, somebody had this area right here. And I don't know if they're gonna end up indicting leadership, whoever had this area right here, San Gabriel Valley, or if the individual that was originally involved, the one that they claim killed himself, if that's where it's going to stop. It'll be interesting. You know, I just want to spend a couple minutes with you guys talking about the case. It's something that, you know, like I said, somebody reached out, told me about it. It's unfolding right now. It's hot off the press. You're probably going to see other videos on it. I don't have a lot of extensive knowledge about the case. I read up on it a little bit. But, you know, one of the things that it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, I told you guys that recently I got in touch with the Sureño that's, you know, agreed to, to to share some stories with me about things that he was involved in or things that he's seen out there. And he actually mentioned something about casitas. They have these operations out there where they're running illegal gambling rackets, underground rackets, where they use like houses or buildings as fronts, like a store or something. On the outside, it looks just like a regular store or a regular house. And people, you know, will go in and out of these places. But what they don't know is like there's a downstairs where they'll go and there's a bunch of slot machines in there. So that's what they're doing. They're running these these operations. The, the Mexican mafia are the ones that are behind it. And it's a smart move. Everybody likes to gamble. Everybody likes to win money. I remember he told me that one of his relatives or somebody close to him told him about a situation where whatever area that it happened in, they were waiting and all of a sudden all these machines just, you know, these trucks pulled up and they had brand new slot machines in them. And it was for the purpose of running these casitas right here, these underground gambling rackets where they have people come in, trusted people, people that they know come in and gamble, you know, underground. Obviously gambling is illegal. So they're doing it on the slunders. And it's something that's starting to, to, to gain a lot more traction. A lot more people are doing it. A lot more Mexican mafia members are starting to invest in running these type of operations. This was something that was mentioned in this case right here. So you guys are probably going to hear a lot more about it, how these operations are ran, how they're set up and the type of money that they're bringing in on it. And I imagine they're probably bringing in a lot of money. Imagine bringing in, you know, 30, 40 machines like that, setting them up like in a in a basement or some kind of downstairs room that was built for something like this and having a bunch of people come in and they're gambling all day. There's not too many casinos that are right there in the in the hood like that. You know, a lot of people, they can't make it out to where a casino is at. So the convenience of it, having a casino right there, a place where they could go gamble right there in the hood, that's 
that's pretty valuable. And it's a lucrative operation if you think about it. So apparently, from what I gathered, all this right here, it started with the killing of two police officers. Apparently, they got called out on a domestic violence call where they said a guy was beating up his old lady. They got, they got somebody that called in and said that this individual, his name was Justin Flores. So apparently, this individual, Justin Flores was at a hotel out there, the Siesta Inn, with this girl. Maybe they got into an argument or something. Somebody heard them arguing. Somebody heard, you know, screaming or something, whatever. Whatever happened, they got called out there for domestic dispute. And apparently, they say after that, this guy holed himself up in there. So I guess while he was holed up in the hotel, they felt like there was some type of imminent threat. So apparently, they felt like the female was in danger and... They, I guess they rushed in, they managed to save her, but in the course of doing that, this cat ended up killing two police officers, Michael Paredes and Joseph Santana. Now, they're also saying that once they breached the room and came up in there to save his old lady, that apparently this guy killed himself. He was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I don't even want to speculate on it. I don't know. These these situations are always suspect when you hear about him. Maybe maybe he felt like, you know what? I'm not going back to the joint. This is my third strike. I'm going to catch a life sentence for this. So I'm going to go out like this. So they're saying that when they came in the room to save his girlfriend, that in the course of doing that, he ended up shooting both of the police officers, Michael Paredes and Joseph Santana. And then they said that they found him with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. You know, these these kind of situations are always suspect. I don't even want to speculate. I don't know. Like I said, this story barely came out. I just read it. I haven't really had a chance to really get into it. But, you know, maybe the dude did kill himself. I, I just always find it suspect when you have somebody that killed law enforcement officers, let alone two law enforcement officers, and then he turns around and kills himself. Maybe. Maybe it was a situation, you know, maybe the situation was like, you know what, I'm not going back to the joint. I'm going to end up catching a life case for this. He took out two cops. He knew that's probably going to be a death penalty case. And he probably just said, you know what? I'm going to go out and this is how I'm going to do it on my terms. So that's what happened. That's what I got right here. But again, I just wanted to jump on real quick, let you guys know that are not aware of this case, that this is something that you probably want to read up on. I imagine you're probably going to get a lot of other videos that are going to come out exclusive groundbreaking news and you're going to see a lot more content on this right here but when i seen that box and i heard the recording and the way that the same way that it, i seen it in the clip that's exactly how it was when they came to my house so anyways these kind of cases they always snowball they get bigger by the day you know i know that because obviously i've been in a case like this and you know we'll see what happens this might lead to another case. Other people that are in custody might end up getting pulled in on it. They might end up getting indicted. Whenever you have a federal case like that, and then you have other situations that are involved, such as you know underground gambling rackets, that's when the feds really come in and try to do some damage. So we'll see how this plays out. Again, for those of you that are not familiar with this case right here, and you want to look it up, it's called Operation Silent Cadence. And everything about the case so far that, that I can see in a little bit of research that I've, I've done on it, all the way down to the title of the operation, lets you know that law enforcement, you know, they're, they're coming back with a vengeance. They're going after these guys because they killed, they're looking at it as not just this one individual killed these two cops, but they're looking at his whole neighborhood, the whole gang whatever gang he was involved in. All I know is it's San Gabriel Valley. It's out there by, by El Monte. So somebody's catching the wrath be, behind that incident where you had two cops that ended up getting killed out there. Anyways, I'm going to make this one quick. I just wanted to jump on real quick. I tapped in with my boy earlier, the Sureño that, that I told you guys about, and he told me he's going to reach out tomorrow. So Tomorrow, I should have a banger for you guys, and hopefully we can keep this going right here. There's some other things that I'm working on right now that you guys will be hearing about in the next day or two. I'm looking forward to it. I got something I'm going to be doing tonight that you guys will probably get tomorrow. I'm trying to do some things right now. I know for a while we went dormant. We kind of went dark, and we weren't putting out that much content. 
but we're going to try to make up for a lot of that time that that we lost so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this short video right here you know i usually don't put out these groundbreaking exclusive hot off the press videos but it's something that like i said somebody reached out to me he told me about it and when i seen that one clip of that box and you know i heard about the casitas the the gambling rackets that were mentioned to me by one of my sources this is something that i had to just jump on real quick just just to you know talk about it with you guys for a couple of minutes but i expect that in the future in the very near future when you see these type of cases right here where there's indictments and they're going after some of these street gangs or they're going after some of the Mexican mafia members that are in different areas of Southern California, when they take them down, I have a feeling that you guys are going to see a lot more of these type of operations, these casita type of operations where there's underground gambling rackets that are taking place. Anyways, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I just want to jump on with you guys. I'm going to go work out in my garage right now. It's a thousand degrees out there. Five minutes, I'll be drenched, but I'm going to get my money. Anyways, I'll be tapping back in with you guys later. I'm going to try to hit you with an inner demons tonight. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this is your boy B, and I'm out. <laughs>